Hello, everyone. Am I audible? Hello, Sarah. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Sarah, I have one question have one again. again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Miss Rajeshwari Raj will read the CV of Dr. Kiroga, no? Yeah, oh. correct. And he will be the first one to speak. Yeah, Ajay sir has just changed the order. Yes. Yeah, so Sergio sir Kiroga? will be the first. Yeah, Dr. Kiroga yeah. will be the first, then uh, Dr. Sinha, and I think the last one will be Dr. Bas. Correct. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, ma'am.
Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome BK Sinha, sir. Welcome, sir. Good evening, sir. Say, your mic is off. Now, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Ajay, sir. Good evening. Pranam, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, ma'am. Hello, sir. Hmm, hello. Oh, hello. Dr. Somesh Vastha. Hello, sir. How is it there in Patna now? How is the climate there in Patna? A little bit cold, sir. Not that much. Yeah, it is very nice to see that young people are joining hands and uh, put, uh, putting so up a people. show like this. Mm -hmm. Or, sir, how are you? Okay, okay. How are you? Okay, okay. Just university se aaye or just I sit up there with child. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Has has Sergio joined? Sergio Ricardo ah. has joined. Yes, sir. Uh. Yes, sir. Okay. As okay. a technical okay. officer of the yeah. vice chancellor. <laughs> sir, actually, Sergio, sir, hasn't joined yet. He has not it. Him. No. Uh, we are waiting for him and uh, Dr. Saikat also. Achha, achha, okay. Um, uh, from a different phone, you can make a call to them. You can make a WhatsApp call. They must be joining here. Uh, with Sergio, there can be a problem that uh, uh, maybe he's not able to connect the time. I IST and Argentine and time. But sir, actually, uh, it's just right now that I have sent him the uh, oh, oh, okay, okay. link. Uh, if you want, I'll call him. Has he seen the message? I'll just check, sir. I'll just check. Yeah. You just uh, check for the double blue tick, yeah. And uh, Professor uh, Yanki Lama from uh, Purulia University, SKB University Purulia has also joined. Yesterday, uh, her, she and her team had come to Sanjeeva's college to visit the biogas department. So it's very kind of her to join. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Yankee. And how the things are going on, JG? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going on fairly well. Mm -hmm. How are you now? You had uh, some trouble with your health uh, a few months. Uh, uh, yeah, but now it's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, that was the reason why uh, we could not uh, keep you on the loop for uh, the conference we had organized in September. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, but, but 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 this year. Again, we are organizing one international conference and uh, okay. you will be taking a lead role in that. Okay. okay. Now, that you are, now, now that you are free from uh, regular university services. Yes, sir. That's true. Yeah, one, uh, once uh, Sergio joined, we'll have to take mm. care that uh, we will uh, focus, uh, we'll uh, do the proceedings in English. 
because uh, obviously he's from far away and uh, <laughs> he never, yeah he never has been to this part and he never uh, knew about any indian so <laughs> <laughs> oh. he had sent a video on aquaculture uh, for uh, for display in the previous conference we had organized in september Okay. And is very very energetic and very active. Good, good, good. Well, if uh, Sergio is finding it difficult to join, then we mm -hmm. can carry on. We can carry on with the proceedings. Deshmukh sir has joined. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Arvind sir. Mm -hmm. Good evening to all. <laughs> Again. Mm -hmm. Raj Nandini from Patna University has also joined. Oh, nice. Uh, yes, sir. I have had a talk with Sergio, sir, and he's coming. He's okay, be okay, joining soon. Okay. Uh, we'll just wait for him for another couple mm -hmm. of minutes, and uh, we'll probably mm -hmm. start. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. In the meantime, we can. We can. I uh, cannot hear you. I will join again. Okay. <laughs> Arvind Deshmukh sir is coming back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He had some technical problems. So now, now I can listen. <laughs> okay. Uh, nice. Arvind sir, your feeling on uh, this uh, webinar that uh, the kids are organizing? Yes, yes. And I'm very happy. <laughs> the next generation is more active than our generation. <laughs> certainly, certainly, sir. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, from the very beginning, uh, I have this uh, opinion that uh, you trust your juniors and they will not uh, let you yes. down. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Definitely, it's yeah. our duty to support them. Yeah, support them, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and this is a uh, learning process. They will learn things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a new breed of uh, teachers like Arunab Datta, mm -hmm. Dr. Swami Asri mm -hmm. is also... Yes developing and they're developing very fast and uh, they're very mm -hmm. very good teachers so, okay uh, so <laughs> by, by the time i retire i'm sure that uh, the uh, society will be in very safe hands yes yes and we want to educate the people regarding biotechnology yeah. and biodiversity mm. so our purpose will be served mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Certainly, sir. Your initiative that you took uh, long back uh, yeah, is yeah. showing up. In, is showing up in Jharkhand also. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and over, I would over like the to... last two and a half years. Sir. Yeah, but, we have. But I want to come personally to Jharkhand. So, <laughs> this year we will organize one international conference. The Very nice. Conference. I will come. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we will host you, and uh, we will keep you in our. Uh, uh, college guest house, uh, 
yeah. I, I hope you love the place to be here. Sakat yeah. Basu has also joined. Welcome, Sakat. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Uh, very nice to join you and uh, look forward. Thank you so much for your warm invitation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, Sakat Basu is our third speaker. He's from okay. Canada and uh, his experience, his practical, his practical experience is uh, terrific. And he has intense desire to help the young generation. Very nice. So today I think there are two, spe two speakers, isn't it? We have three speakers today. Okay. Saiket Basu. BK, Professor B.K. Sinha. And Sergio okay. uh, Ricardo Quiroga from Argentina. Oh, yes. Very nice. Very nice. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, sir. Yes. Good evening, sir. Good evening from India. <laughs> yes, sir. And welcome in Argentina, sir. it is a good morning. Huh? Oh, Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, for uh, Argentina, it's it's good, morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning, sir. <laughs> So, mm. what, what is the time there in Buenos Aires at the moment? Buenos Aires at the moment. Sergio, are you listening to me? You please unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. You are muted. You are muted, sir. Unmute yourself. Please unmute. Sergio, okay. you're not. Yeah. Okay. Now it's okay. Yes. What is the time there, Sergio? What is the time there? Um. What is uh, about the, my presentation? No, 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 no. no. What, what is what the time? Is the time? clock? What is the time in the clock at the moment? It is what six is p.m. Uh, here. Um, it's ten o'clock in in San Luis, Argentina. Ten o'clock. Okay. It, it ten is ten o'clock in the morning. So, so it is not inconvenient for you. I I think that there are six hours of of difference to between to to India, but I'm I'm not sure. I, uh, it I is eight hours difference now. Eight hours. Eight hours difference. Yeah. Okay, now that everybody has joined, over to the organizer, Sarah Sarif. Miss Sarah Sarif, please uh, begin and uh, uh, set the ball rolling. Yes, organizer can start. They must be busy at the moment connecting the things. Is this program being recorded, organizer? Are you recording this program? Yes, the program is recorded. Yes, you can, you can start now. Do you have any technical problem? No, sir. Just, she, she is coming. Just a minute, sir. Okay, okay. okay. It's all right. It's all right. So, uh, totally, we are more than 60 today. Yeah, we are more yes. than 60. Yes, and it's a very nice. I'm very happy mm -hmm. to see <laughs> all young generation in biotechnology. And again, I will reiterate here that our HRD minister is te always telling Biotechnology has a tremendous scope in India. Yes. Biotechnology and biodiversity also. That is the same. So, bio business is increasing fastly in India. 
and particularly sir after the, this covid spell 3 years of covid spell the role Correct. of uh, biotechnology has become more important and yes, yes. and more far reaching here yeah. correct and a solution to many problems is only biotechnology yeah for many problems it, it's biotechnology Sus sustainable solution only biotechnology gives hmm yeah uh one request to the organizers is that uh, if you are to communicate between you over phone don't use the device that you are using for this google meet because every time somebody join somebody left the same cross crossing this is a bit uh, disturbing isn't so you can use another phone another device to communicate yeah so there Hello, will not everyone. be no yeah welcome uh, sarasri yeah, yeah over to you extremely, extremely sorry sir it's okay all right uh, due to some network issues my camera is getting off again and again but that doesn't matter i have start yeah start. hello everyone i wish you all a very good evening and i welcome you to this webinar international webinar on national birds day which is celebrated every year on 5th of january the webinar is organized by st xavier's college ranchi and the internal quality assurance cell in collaboration with the microbiologist society india charkhand unit i am sara sharif from the undergraduate department of zoology st xavier's college ranchi and as the joint organizing secretary i am glad to introduce the chief organizing secretary for this webinar mr sarath sugra pain creative operations head of the microbiologist society india welcome sir i would like to thank mbsi to have given me this opportunity to host this webinar hence i would like to begin but as we all know no event can be expected to be successful without the blessings of our almighty and hence i would like to invite binay topno to take over and pray uh, hello everyone this is binay topno from management department in zavis college let us bow our head and put ourselves in the holiness of god uh, arjun 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 i'd like to interrupt you uh, binay is already here so uh, let's allow him to do the same Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Binet Opno. So let us bow our head and put ourselves in the holiness of God, the Creator. Heavenly Father, thank you for all the blessing you have bestowed upon us. We are truly grateful for them. We thank you for this opportunity to gather us together in today's webinar. bless each person present and keep them safe in protected guide us during the discussion we are also grateful for all the guidance and support as well as the knowledge and wisdom that you have showered upon us throughout the day may this webinar confer learning and values to treasure as it will open the mind heart and soul of every person present here with us dear almighty and ever loving god we glorify and thank your name and your presence continuously remind us of our faithfulness may we humbly ask you to bestow upon our speakers of today with the greatest of in inspiration so that they may share the most of their knowledge to their respective topic may we also absorb the invaluable knowledge experiences and put it into practice dear god we ask you to bless everyone in charge that they may be able to fulfill their tasks responsibly that the objectives they have set may all be achieved your infinite blessing would mean the success of this webinar may we be a living witness of your genuine love through the enactment of the knowledge acquired through this activity may we ask the sound and success of this webinar as we lift this prayer in praise please bless us thank you 
Thank you, Bene, for the devout prayer. I would like to now invite Dr. Ajay Kumar Shivastav. Dear all, sir is the associate professor and head, Department of Botany, St. Xavier's College, Ranchi. He has been the former coordinator of the Internal Quality Assurance Cell of St. Xavier's College, Ranchi. And sir has also served as the state president of MBSI Jharkhand unit. We welcome you, sir. I request you to please come up and address the webinar as the convener of this session. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, what an experience uh, being with uh, the young generation. Well, with regard to the topic today, welcoming everybody, yeah. With regard to the topic today, uh, birds are very, very underrated creatures. We think bird as uh, some object of beauty. It glorifies your environment kind of thing. No, birds are essential. They are health indicator of our society. Now, in newspaper, in magazines, you listen to, you hear, you read about uh, migratory birds. They are important. They are important. Why are they important? And many of us do not have the answer. The fact is that birds, two, a couple of, two birds, male, female, they come from Siberia to Rachi. Jharkhand, okay, and they stay around some water body, and they may they mate, they breed, they produce ten eggs, they produce six or seven young birds, they grow up. Now, in the process, what do they do? They eat the seeds of lotus, nilambo, and other things. As a result, they keep the pond cleaning. So. The life of a pond, if left alone, is six or seven years. In six, seven years, it can be filled up. But if the migratory birds keep coming, then the life of the pond will be uh, indefinitely, 60, 70, 100 years, and will not need a lot of dredging every time. So what you need good water water is you make a where birds are coming and they are producing and they are eating they are cleaning naturally so so important these birds are and I'm very happy to share my ideas with uh, the young generation on this international birds day so welcome everybody and without taking much time over back to the organizers for further course of action thank you thank you thank you sir we are indeed very fortunate to have you as our guide and mentor, and we could not have expected anyone better than you because you have so much vast knowledge that we get to learn a lot from you, a lot. Thank you, sir. I would now like to request Ria Anand to come up and introduce the chairperson for the session, Dr. Soumya Shrivastav. Over to you, Ria. Thank you, Sara. Greetings, everyone. I am Ria Anand, a first year BCom honor student at St. Xavier's College, Rachi, and it's a pleasure to virtually connect with you all in this webinar. Soma Shivastava Ma'am stands as a distinguished academic post, currently holding the position of assistant professor at Patna University. Armed with a PhD in botany from the University of Lucknow, her research journey has been marked by an unwavering commitment to understanding the intricate repercussions of arsenic on plant life, exploring the rims of metabolic, biochemical, and molecular dynamics. Before assuming her current role, Soma Ma'am served as a scientist at ICAR, where her contributions played a pivotal role in projects centered around soil and plant nutrients. Her academic progress has not gone unnoticed earning her prestigious accolades such as the Dr. Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan Teaching Excellence Award and the Eminent Women Scientist Award in 2023. Ma'am is more than just an academic. Her actively, she actively contributes to the administrative landscape of Patna University, lending her expertise to committees and assuming responsibilities from the ranging from the IT cell to the research development cell. Beyond the confines, of traditional academia, she plays a crucial role in shaping the future generation of scholars. 
She supervises PhD and MSc students, guiding them through the intricacies of their academic pursuits. Her impact extends to the global stage as evidenced by her role as the organizing secretary of the International Conference on Advances in Life Science in partnership with COSET, Sam Houston State University, Texas, USA. In essence, Soma Shvastava Ma'am epitomizes the synergy between teaching, research, and administrative responsibilities. Her multidimensional contributions make her an influential figure in the academic landscape with a lasting impact on both her students and the broader scientific community. Thank you. Now over to you, ma'am. Please enlighten us with your words. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. You're, you're yeah, okay. yes, Thank you, Ria, for such an elaborate uh, introduction. Thanks a lot. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you, organizers of this webinar, that is Microbiology Society India and uh, St. Xavier's College Ranchi for giving me this wonderful opportunity and privilege to chair the session where three eminent personalities will deliver their addresses. Our guest of honor is Dr. Saikat K. Basu. Sir is Executive Research Director, F uh, PFS, Lethbridge, Alberta, uh, Canada. He will grace this international webinar through his talk on birds as pollinators. We have also with us two keynote speakers, Dr. B.K. Sinha from Rachi, Jharkhand, and Dr. Sergio Ricardo Quiroga from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Dr. B.K. Sinha is currently also the technical officer of the vice chancellor of Rachi University, will deliver his speech on human avian conflict. And Dr. S.R. Quirogo will deliver his talk on environment and birds in Argentina. He is currently research coordinator of the Argentine Cultural Institute of Higher Education and professor of the Francisco Fortarello Chair. We look forward to hearing from such great personalities. 30 minutes have been allotted to each talk of keynote speaker and 10 minutes for question answer session, which will be handed by Ms. Ishani. I now request Ms. Rajeshwari Raj to brief the audience about Dr. S.R. Kirobo from Argentina. And then after we can have his lecture. Uh, over to you, Ms. Rajeshwari Raj. Good evening, everyone. This is Rajeshwari Raj, currently pursuing BCom Honours from St. Xavier's College. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with a great pleasure that we introduce our esteemed speaker, Dr. Sergio Ricardo Quiroga, who has a master's degree in higher education. He directs the research department of the Argentine Cultural Institute of Higher Education in Argentina and is a professor at the ICL. He also directs the Francisco Fatriola Chair. He is a communicator and educator with two specialization in education and research. His interest lies in research. His interest lies in communication, culture, education, and environment. He has a hundred articles on the subject in international journals, book chapters, and books. His last two books are titled Education Between Local and International Settings, Lambert, and The Foreigner, The Public, and The Circumstances, Alina. He is also a poet. So please welcome Dr. Sergio Ricardo Coiroga. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, their colleagues, their friends. Uh, well, I I see my presentation. Um, well, um, thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you for the invitation. I was very happy to participate in this special and prestigious conference. Well, um, my main field of study is uh, the communication, the, the environment communication, the uh, knowledge mobi uh, mobilization and the social communication of scenes. Well, in this opportunity, I, 
have a short presentation about the environment and birds in Argentina. Mm. Uh, this is uh, in the in the screen the uh, the poem I write in Italian when I was in I live in Roma and I study with uh, Giuseppe Ragnati, one of the students of the Francesco Fattorello, the theory of communication. Um, well, um, and this is, uh, um, I live in San Luis uh, province, Argentina, and the, it's a province of the center of Argentina, and this picture is, uh, is about the, the Patagonia in Argentina. Well, uh, environment, um, we can understand as the surrounding or condition in which persons, animals, or plants, lives, or, or operate. Um, my presentation, we have three these general themes or topics, environment and birds, what is uh, in, importance, reason why birds are important for the planet, and some uh, words about the Argentine environment and birds. Um, the diversity, I'm sorry for my English first, uh, birds are, are also vital to ecosystems, both wild and those managed by humans. We depend on them for pest control, habitat maintenance and plant pollination. The diversity and variety of bear forms in almost every habitat on the planet in a scientific marvel. They have incredibly light wings and uh, hollow bones that help them fly. Birds also lay eggs which have a hard shells and instead of teeth uh, have a her beak of which or right in size. Only 40 bird species out or more than uh, 1,000 do not fly. Mm. This includes the penguin that use uh, its wings by flippers to swings and the ostrich that has Grow so large that it's no longer it's no longer needs to fly. Uh, eight uh, interesting ways uh, bears are important to the planet. First, bears are an important part of uh, ecosystems. A wide variety of bears uh, of different uh, size. Uh, perform essential functions even with uh, a single ecosystem. Smaller birds can eat seeds and nuts, and many of them fall to the forest floors where creatures below can access these nutrients. Second, birds help forest ecosystem by dispersing fungi. There are some species of birds, such as the Patagonic, black-throated, wet wet that fit on mushrooms. And when these birds did, uh, did up these fungus to it, they accumulate spores in their bodies, which they disperse through the forest as they travel. Uh, third, um, Birds uh, are important pollinators. Um, uh, Hammer birds and after flower visiting, birds are essential to plants and trees when they visit their flowers to drink nectar. They are attracted to bring colors and shapes, and the plants have adapted to provide this study purchase for pollination for pollinating birds. Bears deep, um, deep into the flower to reach this sweat nectar, which is often the pollen adheres to the body. Fourth, bears spread nutrients in the ocean. 
sea bears eat fish, crustaceans, and other marine creatures in the open ocean or near shores. These bears must return to land to rest and lay their eggs in nests. And during this time, they will deposit the guano or droppings, usually on the rock, cliff, or soil in which they nest. Um, five birds protect important habitats like wetlands. Uh, wild birds are beaten in management of species that graze in wetlands, such as snails and perquignies. They hunt this species, which is in the absence of predation, will convert the wetland into marshes due to overgrazing. Six birds are natural pest control. Uh, worldwide birds consume between 400 and 500 million tons of insects each year. This occurs within garden forests, savannas, families, towns, and cities. Uh, then uh, birds um, disperse seeds, a primary food source for many birds in these seeds and nuts that grow from plants and three. When birds eat these foods, they plant an important role in dispersing seeds to new areas. The birds deposit the seeds through its dropping, providing it uh, with vital nutrients to help it grow. Um, uh, finally, birds contribute to people's uh, happiness. Birds watching brings joy to millions of people around the world. This is the hobby of observing and identifying birds in their natural habitat. This encourages people to get outdoors and enjoy nature, boosting the economy as money in its spend on tools and travel. Well, uh, what is happening to birds around the world? Birds, especially around the world, are declining in number. A recent report highlighted that even while research bird species in the United States and Canada have declined uh, by almost 30% over in the past uh, 50 years. This is mine due to habitat loss, um, due to urbanization and the rush plans for agriculture. Um, what can we do to help birds? Uh, Make uh, outdoor space bear friendly. One of the best ways you can help a local bear species is to make uh, outdoor space bear friendly. Um, help uh, protect uh, habitats. Habitat uh, loss is one of the main reasons bear population and declining. Important habitats such as forests and wetland needs to be protected. Uh, sea bears will benefit from the regulation of fishing and the introduction of more protected marine parks. Uh, support clarity. Um, it's important to support clarities that campaign to protect bears, such as the global organization, bear life we should uh, encourage government to protect wildlife, such as bears, that policies and regulation before important species are lost. Argentina environment and birds. Uh, Argentina is home uh, to a rich diversity of birds with more than uh, 100 species record. The country has a variety of habitats ranging from rainforests in the north to tundra in the south which contributes to this diversity. Deforestation, uh, agricultural expansion, and urbanization are significant threat to many bird species in Argentina, as they direct, uh, directly affect their natural habitats. Additionally, uh, air and water pollution um, can also have a negative impact on bird population. Um, in terms of conservation, Argentina has established numerous protected areas and natural reserves to preserve biodiversity, including birds. 
However, the implementation and effectiveness of uh, these measures may vary. Um, well, bears uh, are um, of a wide variety, can be found throughout the world and have become an integral part of uh, human culture. Its beautiful appearance and charming signs allow people to connect deeply with nature. Population of bears that historically inhabited central Argentine today creates a Patagonia, moving up to uh, 1,000 and um, 300 kilometers as a consequence of uh, climate change. In recent years, uh, of about uh, um, 100 species analyzed, 77% moved towards the south of the country, changing their behaviors and geographical distribution. In the Patagonia, the plateau uh, changes in wind and desertification affect the reproduction of the Maca Tobiana. We can uh, see in the in this slide, uh, raising the sea levels and meeting melting ice, and those are now effects of uh, climate change. The Macatobiano population has decreased by 80% in the last 25 years and could become extinct in the next decade. Since uh, 2009, statistics have been successfully developed to seek to reserve to repair the situation. Uh, sir, sorry to interrupt, but your slides are not moving. Okay. Um, the conservation of the biodiversity and ecosystem service requires mitigation and adaptation misuse. In Argentina, uh, 35 of birds are migratory, like moon birds, uh, what's not, that has traveled surprising distance. Bird migration is crucial to maintain ecosystem, controlling insects and dispersing seeds. In Argentina, the red knot and the red goose and uh, threatened species. The area of environment, the national area of uh, environment and sustainable development works on the preservation of cow cans, combating pitching, poaching, and promoting reproductive success. The, the conservation of uh, migratory birds not only indicates the health of the environment, but also encourages international cooperation for their preservation. Uh, well, uh, finally, climate change is modifying the distribution of species. Um, latitudinally towards the poles, so birds from the northern hemispheres uh, tend to change their distribution northwards, and those from the south move even further south. But also change have occurred in the attitudinal disposition. That is, species that live in the plain or the in low areas of mountain system have the ten to six higher altitude. Edit in this to this uh, are chains links the migration earlier reproductive cycles and the lack of food for their offspring. This is uh, my short presentation and sorry for my English. And thank you very much for all your attention. Thank you so much. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sergio, for uh, giving such a beautiful presentation. I'm sure my audience must have enjoyed this presentation and learned a lot from you. 
I would like to request you to please address some of the questions that uh, our viewers might have. And I would like to request Ashani to take over and handle this Q&A session. Over to you, Ashani. Ashani, are you able to listen to me? Uh, Sergio, uh, there is one question from uh, as a means uh, so 40 years ago, I uh, read about uh, some Labrador hawks. Labrador is a part of Canada. It used to fly to uh, the equator, then to Brazil, then to Argentina, and finally to the Falkland Islands. Falkland Islands is very close to Argentina, I suppose. Falkland Islands is far south of uh, Argentina. So, have you seen any Labrador hawks? Actually, I, I want to know more about uh, such migratory birds who migrate all the way from, they travel at least 10,000 kilometers from uh, Canada to um, south of Argentine. Have you seen a bird like that? Sergio. Sergio, please unmute yourself. Interesting question. <laughs> uh, they are called is, uh, Argentina is a, is a big country. Um, um, uh, not uh, was clear the, the, the national policies in, in this area. Uh, the government, um, not uh, um, um, uh, not think that uh, is important uh, the environment and, and in special the, the bears uh, in Argentina with um, uh, with found support. Um, um, we in Argentina uh, there are um, several climate um, ice uh, um, savanna uh, rivers uh, mountain and the geography uh, are uh, is diverse um i i can ask um, very clear your your question um but um i think that uh, with the new uh, government who, who was um, assumed in in the past uh, december uh, we we get a new policy in this uh, area in this match. So, have you answered the question? Shall we move to the next question? Yes. yes. All right, uh, sir, there's another question for you, sir. The question is, how do birds replace their feathers? I request you to please answer this question. I think, Sarah, this question will be answered by uh, the audience and uh, Professor B.K. Sena is the better person who can do that. So, <laughs> <laughs> right, a... Yeah, he, he's a world famous ornithologist. So, uh, being very technical, uh, this question may pass to Professor B.K. Sena. We'll save and, uh, the question. He can answer him, it uh, during his lecture or after. After okay. the lecture. Definitely, sir. All right, sir. No issues. All right. Is there any more questions from the uh, uh, audience? 
these put up questions. Okay, there's another question, uh, Dr. Sergio, for you. Uh, can you share examples of successful conservation projects aimed at s saving bird species? And what lessons can we learn from these initiatives? Um, you see, uh, um, the the, conser the conservation of biodiversity and ecosystem service requires a mitigation and adaptation in measures. Uh, intentional mortality and inadequate management of seabirds that became trapped in fishing nets represent a threat and may interference with the detection of population effects related to fishing. Regarding conservation status, the gray heads albatross is a danger of extinction and the black brown albatross and the shorter uh, Jean Peter are the vulnerable category. Um, I remember uh, I I don't know uh, clearly the, the national politics in this area. Um, the Argentina um, was um, um, important, difficult um, problems uh, with the economic crisis, the inflation, the unemployment of the people. Um, the government uh, has privileged the conservation of the area of birds, um, the national politic of, um, of uh, natural environment. I don't know if he, I can um, explain or write this uh, question. Uh, it's all right, sir. Uh, like, I hope you uh, you have already answered the question, right? All right. Uh, actually, there are no further questions for you, sir. I'd like to thank you for giving such amazing answers. Uh, it was really nice listening to your answers. It's very informative. Thank you, sir. I would like to move forward and uh, hence call upon Sushmita Baski to introduce our first, uh, our second keynote speaker, Dr. B.K. Sinha. Over to you, Sushmita. Thank you, Sara, for inviting me. First of all, a very good evening to all of you present over here. Before I go ahead, let me introduce myself. So, my name is Sushmita Baski from Zoology Department, Semester 1, Sanjay College, Nachi. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure and we, we that we introduce our esteemed speaker, Dr. Braz Kisho Sinha, sir, with a diverse and impressive educational background. His present position is Technical Officer to Vice Chancellor in Rachi University. And he has pursued MSc, PhD, FT, and many more. Throughout his professional journey, Sir has held various roles in each contributing to his vast knowledge and experience. From being a former head, University Department of Zoology, Rachi University, he was also the principal of JN College Dhurwa, Rachi, and HOD of Zoology Department in SS Memorial College, Rachi. He has specialization in research on soil insects and ecological alien species, niche modeling, and many more. He also has publication about 40, and 40 in national and international journals. He has been awarded as a Lifetime Achievement Award in contributing to Ecological uh, Geological Society of India. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Susmita. And just I come to the presentation first. And I'm thankful to all of you, the organizers, uh, the chairperson, chairperson of 
today's webinar, international webinar on World World's Day, and especially all the young generation, those who have organized this one nicely, this webinar. I thank you all and giving me this opportunity to uh, share some of my experiences uh, with you people. So just give me a few seconds, minutes rather, just to um, uh, come to this presentation. What I was hearing from uh, the Argentinian friend, yeah. it was a good experience. Let's see, I'm going to share it now. You'll have to give me the permission from that side. It's not allowing me to share the screen, isn't it? So give me the permission, permission for, for sharing the... Uh, uh, Shivansh, please uh, see to the uh, issue. Sir, you, you have the permission, sir. You can. You are, you are having the permission, just from my side. Okay. Yes, uh, sir, you can share, you can share. Okay, just like that. Okay, let's just do set. No, I am unable to share the hmm? Sir, alternatively, oh. you can do one thing. You can uh -huh. uh, you can WhatsApp or mail. Uh, you can WhatsApp uh, your PPT and, and, uh, and continue without uh, uh, the presentation. Okay, 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 no problem. I'm just so sharing. Neither would make uh, uh, will you share the Yes, slides. I'm sharing it. I'm just minute. That's yes. what I'm sharing it. I'm sharing it. Well, just give me two minutes only. I've sent it, huh? I have sent the whole of the presentation, huh? All right, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Huh? Then you can start. Okay. Start. Okay. okay.
small right line to the cloud. And share windows. Safari is stopping it. It's not allowed. Okay. So just today I will be talking about uh, the avian, human avian conflict. So that is the topic of today's presentation. And most of the thing will be more common things that I would like to share. The theme of this National Birds Day is right to flight. The theme represents that flight of a bird, which symbolizes freedom. Bird means freedom. You fly in the sky. That is the unlimited zone for you where you can imagine, you can fly. Imaginations. So that symbolizes fly, freedom, and that. So that is the theme of this year's. There is one two-liner. Chahachati chand chiriyon ka basar tha per par. Mere ghar ek per tha aur ek ghar tha per par. With this two line, I start. Nestle birthday, as it has been uh, shared by you people, that this, since 2002, it has been celebrating in America, just before the Chris, Chris, uh, this Christmas, and the, the people go for the count and all that. And afterwards, this... Uh, National birthday is being celebrated throughout the world, and it has become a phenomena rather to manage and maintain the birds. Birds have the issues that is mainly man made, as the uh, Argentinian friend Sergio was talking about. It's all man made. Whether you talk of the deforestation or climate change. Excuse me, sir. I'm very sorry to interrupt, uh, mm. but I'd just like to tell you that I have tried to share the screen for mm -hmm. you. So if you'd like, then I'll I'll be there to change the slides for you while you speak. Okay. Is that okay? Okay. 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 So you can change. You can come to the next slide. All right, sir. Third slide. All right. Ah, third slide. Third slide. You go to this. Ah, then I can. Then I can Skip the fourth one and go fifth one. Okay, skip this one. Skip, mm. okay. So not going to the history, I just talked about this. Skip this one also. Okay, sir. So this is the one. Uh, one thing I would like to add over here, all the photographs you are seeing over here, that is photograph my my. I have photographed all these photographs. And that too from my balcony. <laughs> so it's wonderful photographs of the birds. So you can enjoy these uh, photographs also. Just to for the knowledge of the other than the geology people over here on this platform, I would like to say that the birds are warm-blooded animals, vertebrates of class apes. And they have got two characteristic features. One that is their body is covered with the feeders, uh, as the question was asked earlier, whether they how they shed off their that is called as molting actually. And the fore limb is modified into wings. And third important thing is that their mouth is provided with a beak which is without teeth. So this is a very unique feature to the birds. They have got the shelled eggs and the, the legs are scaly. That is that shows that they are they, they are having the precursor of or uh, they have originated from the reptilian stock. Next, please. The people who study the birds, about the birds, the science of birds is called as ornithology, and the person is known as ornithologist. On this day, we would like to uh, remember and pay homage to Dr. Salim Ali, the birdman of India. He was the biggest, one of the biggest ornithologists of India, 
and we must remember him. He has given the different dimensions for conservation of the birds, and that's why he was called the bird man. And I would like to share this one also, that in 1960, Salim Ali recommended the a uh, critically endangered great Indian bustard to be the declared as a national bird of India. But our beautiful peacock, <laughs> it, all, it was selected finally, and peacock was declared the uh, national bird of India. As I've told you that the birds have evolved from the reptilian stock and the Archaeopteryx lithographica is said to be the connecting link between the flying bird, because that is the uh, glider between the dinosaur and the avian stock. But here we are going to discuss a little bit about the conflicts. So we have to understand the thing, the perception of the conflict between the uh, wildlife or the bird, which is multidisciplinary and transdisciplinary. So we'll have to understand many of the dimensions of it. So this is very, very important to understand over here. As Sergio was talking about the ecosystem and all that, dear friends, ecosystem has gone in, got many components. That is, you talk about the food chain, you talk about the energy, energy flow, and many more things. So, functioning of the system is there. And we are the components of that system, a small fry in that system. Now, always, whenever we think for the things, the human being comes into the center focus because everything runs around us. So the ecosystem functioning and the services that is focused towards us. And that's why we identify the services, what we are getting from the ecosystem. So a functional ecosystem will recycle the materials. Uh, in short term, we can say the biogeochemical cycle. There is a flow of energy, the solar energy or other energies that is trapped into the system and that runs the ecosystem. So there are many different types of ecosystems which runs and ultimately become functional. The ecosystem become functional. And the services that we derive out of it that is coming from the functional ecosystem, the different provisions that we get. That is food, fodder, forest, oxygen, productivity of the agriculture, medicines, and so on and so forth. And all these are regulated also. Our culture is woven around this one with the functions and the services. So many more things comes when we talk of the functional ecosystem and the all each and every component of it is functioning. So finally, that gives a, or the existence of the human being on the earth that becomes a part of it if the ecosystem is functional. And that's why all these things becomes important. So next is what actually drives it. So many things are there, which becomes the drivers. And as I told you, that the human being is in the center. Naturally, human being becomes major driver for all these things. Because development is there, growth is there, living condition is there. So the human being is the main driver and all the disturbances that is coming out of it is because of the human being. So there are number of drivers in the ecosystem. And we intervene in them and we change it. So because of this change, 
the ecosystem get disturbed. And here from the other components, say for example, the wildlife, the avian fauna, and so on and so forth, the conflict comes into the picture. Next slide, please. So you will find in this picture two states of the ecosystem. One is a natural, uh, 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 not much disturbed one. So you will see it is very expanding and good in a condition where the indicator of environment is there in the center that is functioning, ecosystem is functioning. It is providing you the ecosystem services. And then finally, ecosystem multifunctionality that encompasses everything. When it is going to be disturbed, then it is shrinking. And functionality that is coming, gradually going, services are shrinking, 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 and services are diminishing. So that is the situation where the conflict starts. So IUCN has defined this one. What is this conflict actually? Struggle that emerge when the presence or behavior of wildlife poses an actual or perceived direct and recurring threat to human interests of needs, leading to disagreements between groups of people and negative impact on people or wildlife. This is the definition which has been given by the IUCN in 2003. So this definition simply implies that there is a conflict be between the human being and the birds, human being and the animals, wildlife animals, the wildlife or the birds with the pet animals, domestic animals, and so forth. This becomes a very complex, as you see. Now, this is because of the shrinking habitat of this. They will try to get themselves established. They will try their food. They will try their habitat to be uh, intact. But we uh, encroach, is, encroach their habitat. And because of the encroachment of their habitat, there is tension on that side. And from there, the actual um, problem starts. In Jharkhand, even, we have experienced the problem of the elephants. We have migratory elephants, they migrate, and we have blocked their path or route of migration at many points. All those points, whenever they again cross, and things which come in their uh, migratory path or route, they destroy the things. And these activities of theirs, sometimes they get hearted. Sometimes they uh, enter into the houses of the people, destroy their uh, house. Sometimes we uh, have heard that in newspapers also this comes when the elephants migrate uh, from Ranchi and all that, they cross the places of villages, many places, villages, they go into the house and they eat the uh, rice and all that, which has been cooked by the local people. So this becomes a continuous interaction between the human and the wildlife. And this is increasing day by day because the things are shrink, the habitat of theirs is shrinking. So this is a problem. So some of the things which we can uh, enumerate that the uh, reason for the increasing human wildlife conflict or birds or avian conflict, the major role is of deforestation and degradation of the forest. The habitat is fragmented. There is change in the land use pattern, there is urbanization. And this urbanization sometimes engulfs many of the areas, surrounding areas. So 
agglomeration creates, and finally, all those agglomeration actually uh, engulfs many of the uh, nearby zones uh, habitat of uh, the um, area. Another important thing is unplanned development. You can see th these things in Rachi itself that uh, many of the hill, uh, hillocks that has been occupied by the uh, people and uh, new buildings have come up over there, which is a green area, green zone, that is the place for visit of the birds. But nowadays, the concrete structures are there. Because of the concrete structures, the birds have to go, migrate. They have to go somewhere else. So these are the problems. Then, because this is expanding, their prey is also diminishing, and so on and so forth. Human population is naturally, as I gave, gave you the example, the human population increase in the human population is another factor which is uh, engulfing the, the uh, shrinking the their habitat. Now, one has to pay the cost. Both sides pay the cost, as I told you in the example itself earlier, that crop damage, they do the crop damage, we damage them. There is, we, we injure them, we, 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 we try to push them away. Likewise, there is casualty of the people, human being, casualty of the domestic animals. On the contrast, the wildlife also get. Uh, you must be here, uh, having uh, one uh, uh, news of the leopard that enters in, entered into the uh, Bombay, some residential area. So people get horrified with that one, and they endure the uh, wildlife. Similar situation is with the birds, similar situation is with the snakes, and all the, whenever you see the snake, immediately you want to kill it. Whether it is poisonous or non-poisonous, or you want to rehabilitate it. So this is the mindset also, that whatever we, are, we want, we will take it, but at the cost of the other, and the conf conflict is here. So you can see the drivers, actual drivers are, these are the, I have just prepared one uh, slide. So what is the number of papers published on the internet, available on the internet, the, the wildlife conflict, human wildlife conflict, human wildlife conflict. So you will find that there is a climate change. That is the one of the reason. Cultural, policy, retaliatory killing and poaching, human disturbances measure, that is 27%. Then forage, prey availability, that is 24%. And proximity to the forest, that is 23%. So likewise, much of the research has been done on the human-wildlife conflict. And you see the picture that how much of the researchers have tried to find out what are the reasons, what are the drivers, why these conflicts are, and how it can be minimized. So this is a picture of the publication, research publication. So in other words, what type of, did they do? Destruction of the crops, major reason. Attacks, injuries, deaths. So you find this one. So globally, there is research on conflicts. In India, we are also doing these researches going on. And on the basis of that, many of the corridors and all that, these things are being incorporated in the development projects. Basically, the conflict study man uh, wildlife conflict study is mainly based on the uh, mammals especially the large carnivores ungulates logomorpha and, and others the birds are included in them so birds are not in isolation and that's why these studies are having the birds incorporated in the human wildlife conflict and that's why i'm uh, all the time talking about the wildlife that is the reason in fact, the conservation of wild birds lies at the heart of many such conflicts linked to agricultural interests, forestry, hunting, 
fisheries, energy production, and public health, among others. So, uh, just to have some glimpses, you can have the, I have talked about the uh, human elephant conflict and the uh, scenario in the Jharkhand. The other one, the story lies with the uh, sparrow. The sparrow is, has almost, it is on the verge of, uh, you can't see it nowadays, very few sparrow can be seen. Domestic sparrow, the passer domesticus especially. Because uh, the, the, its habitat had been, has been uh, diminished. The, the houses are no more of that type which earlier it was. The apartments have been constructed. Towers are there where these uh, small sparrow cannot live and lay their eggs and continue their species. And that's why they are in trouble. So we will have to see this one, this how these sparrows or sparrow like many of the birds, because you see they are good uh, pollinators. They are the indicators of the environmental status. You can remember the, the period uh, during the COVID, the environment was clean, quiet, calm. And at that point of time, the, many of the unseen birds were visible to us. That was amazing. So in, they are the indicators of the good health of the environment. The next, next important uh, bird that comes into my mind, that is of vulture status. Nowadays, we have made the restaurants of the vulture just to revive their population. They are the important component of the ecosystem. They are the good scavengers. And without them, uh, many of the things can't be done. Because in the biogeochemical cycle, their role is very, very important. And that's why restoration of their, these vultures are very important in the uh, ecosystem. Now, there are many efforts being taken by many of the organizations. First of all, the NEAC, National Environmental Awareness Campaign, that is being carried over by the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change, Government of India. They support the NGOs to organize seminars, workshops, awareness programs, and all that for the conservation of the birds and wildlife animals. Again, the, there is Bombay Natural History Society that is also doing the same job. Then another one is the Salim Ali Center for Ornithology and Natural History. Also, most of the NGOs are nowadays um, uh, uh, development. They try to do the thing, justify things. Now, in the project, especially in the developmental projects, these have been incorporated in Jharkhand. Uh, Nature Conservation Society is working very uh, nicely for the last 30 years or more. Then Intac of Ajaribag is doing well to do this one. Very recently, and their efforts are being taken by the uh, Jharkhand people. And they are preparing a citizen's report on bird. About 112 people are engaged in this exercise. I uh, think many of them will be on this webinar also uh, participating, and they must be the member of this citizen's report. When I was in Dhanbad, there is a uh, group of people called as Dhanbad Birders, and uh, they have constituted a uh, Society also, IBPS, Indian Bird Photography Society. They are also doing a very nice job. And they are doing this through the photographs and collecting the photographs of different, when they cite the birds and they collect it and contribute to the uh, citizen support. Then, Rachi, there is one all, uh, small organization also that is called as ICON, which, which is doing this job. Now, there are some conservation places because you have to uh, protect the areas where these birds can come and remain over there, breed over there. Because earlier, uh, Dr. Ajay was talking about the migratory birds, especially. So, they have got two different zones, warm zones and cold, cold zones. They come over here for breeding. So, their breeding place has to be intact. And then their 
species can uh, continue. And so the variety and the diversity of the avian fauna can be maintained. And for that, in the Jharkhand, Plamo Tiger Reserve is a very good one. Then Hajaribag National Park, actually it is a sanctuary, but we generally call it as a national park. North Karpura Valley, Karpura Valley, that is another important place. And Udua Lake Bird Sanctuary. These are important areas where the birds are being uh, conserved or their, their habitat is being conserved. And they are protected over there. Forests contain large number of wild birds that are ecologically specialized and extremely sensitive to habitat loss. This is very important. And that's why I'm emphasizing from the very beginning that forest management of the forest and maintenance of the forest is very important for the specialized birds. You cannot see many of the birds outside the forest. They will not come out. So if the forest is maintained, their number, their uh, species will be maintained. So because they are very, very sensitive. And as you know, as Sirajiva and many other people have just told about deforestation, pollution, and I'm also talking about, in, especially in the forest, if the cattle is introduced, that becomes devastating. So these things are to be taken care of. Again, the convert is also taking efforts to manage this one because the ecosystem has to be managed. So national level human wildlife conservation management plan has been developed and it is being implemented. The second tier is of the state level human wildlife conservation management plans. Habitat improvement and restoration plans are there. Human behavior modifications. We are awaiting people to understand this one. So the laws are being formulated like this. Capacity building awareness is there. Conflict resolutions are there. So the birds or the animals, they can be isolated places for them. So these efforts are being taken. Different legislations are being there, like the Project Tiger, Project Elephant, and so on and so forth. Protected areas have been developed. Now, one another important thing which has been uh, applied in the Northeast by the Northeastern Railway, that is applying the B, Plan B, that is called as Plan B. So you implant the bees. And they will ward off the things. So this is very important to understand. That UP government has created a fund for them. How to manage this one? Urissa, they, they, they give the footballs, uh, seed balls to the elephants, migratory uh, um, um, elephants. So likewise, many of the efforts are being taken to manage and maintain the number and species of the birds and the wildlife. Aaj hum isko kaise celebrate kare? I started with the things or the day has to be celebrated. Ek gureya mere mudeer par aai mein achambit tha niharu ya dane do. This spells everything. Is sab cheez bata raha hai. Ki isko humko bachana kaise. The man Bird conflict to understand to understand this one. This is most important, right? So this is the solution. Understand the conflict, mitigate it, respond to the things, prevent it, make a policy, monitor the things, and then thank you. Save the wildlife. Every amazing bird, ranging from elegant songbird to imposed raptors imposing raptors, add a different color to the rich fabric of our ecosystem. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any question? I hope I have uh, been in right time. The time awarded to me. Yes, sir. The beautiful, the presentation was indeed mm. beautiful. It was, it was really good watching the slides. I think everybody must have enjoyed it a lot. It was very, very informative and it felt like it should never end, but sadly okay. it's the end of the slides. Uh, I'd like to request Shani to please check the chat boxes and see if there's any questions for sir. Over to you, Shani. <clears throat> Hello. 
Well, sir, there are many compliments for you in the chat section. Okay, that the okay. presentation was, yeah. Thank you, God.